The master stream is an extremely effective weapon in the arsenal of firefighting. Large caliber water streams from deck guns or ladder pipes have saved the lives of hundreds of firefighters and prevented the destruction of billions of dollars of property. Master streams can be used in many ways. They can be used to quickly knock down a large fire upon arrival. They can be used to protect nearby buildings from rapidly spreading flames. They can also be used to extinguish a fire in a structurally unsound building without exposing firefighters to the dangers of collapse. But like a lot of things in life, there's a trade-off. Master streams also have disadvantages. A powerful water stream from a deck gun, a ladder pipe, can kill or injure firefighters in collapsed buildings. Does this mean we should not use master streams at fires? No, not at all. Some fires, you can't do without them. All I'm saying is we've got an extremely powerful weapon, and we have to make sure it's used right, safely and correctly. This video will show you how and when to use a master stream safely, what the hazards of master streams are, and what precautions you can take when using a master stream. First, let's start by defining the term master stream so we're all on the same wavelength. When a nozzle delivers more than 300 gallons of water per minute, with nozzle pressures of 50 to 100 pounds per square inch, that's a master stream. Its speed is at least 60 miles an hour, or almost 100 feet per second. A ground-based master stream can be a deck gun permanently fixed and used from the top of a pumper or a portable deluge nozzle removed and placed on the ground close to the fire. Aerial-based master streams can be ladder pipes, aerial platforms, or snorkels. If a fog nozzle discharges over 300 gallons of water per minute, it too is considered a master stream. How do you use master streams? Where do they fit into the coordinated fire attack? As always, the size up of the fire determines your attack strategy. Sometimes when you arrive, the fire is already too large and can't be extinguished by an interior attack hose line. It's too dangerous to send firefighters inside. There's no choice but to use master streams, either until the fire is knocked down or until it's completely extinguished. Most of the time, however, the fire won't be that fully developed when you roll up. Then the right strategy is to go with an aggressive interior attack. Conduct your search and rescue and then attack the fire. At some fires, the blaze can be extinguished with an interior attack hose stream, and a master stream can be used to prevent fire spread. When it's a borderline call, when you're not sure what strategy to use, remember these two general rules. First, your primary duty is to save lives, including firefighters' lives. Second, no firefighter should be inside a building that's under attack by master streams. If the master stream is being used briefly for a quick knockdown, firefighters can be safely deployed to the floor below. But when master streams are being used for total extinguishment, they constitute enough of a collapse danger to keep firefighters out, out of the building and outside the collapse danger zone. With these two rules in mind, the best strategy is to go with an interior attack whenever it's not prohibitively dangerous. But on the fire ground, an interior attack doesn't always work. Sometimes the fire grows rapidly and the flames can't be extinguished by firefighters advancing a hose line. In those cases, you must switch to an exterior attack using outside master streams. And you don't have to wait around to see if the interior attack fails. If you think you may need them, go ahead and position the master streams on a standby basis. Then, if they're needed, they'll be ready to swing into action. This is good fire ground planning. But under no circumstances should master streams be opened up until every firefighter is out of the fire area. Not just ordered out, but physically out. Off the fire floor, out of the building, and if need be, out of the collapsed danger zone around the building. Chief officers have a special responsibility to safeguard firefighters when master streams are put in operation at major alarms. Even though firefighters or company officers actually direct the stream, the chief orders the equipment into operation and he must monitor and evaluate its effectiveness. For example, before allowing a firefighter to discharge a master stream into a burning window, the chief must wait for the sector officer directing operations inside the building 
to confirm all firefighters have been withdrawn to safety. Over the years, too many firefighters have been injured by the uncoordinated use of master streams. The safe transition from interior to exterior attack of a structural fire requires four elements. One, a firefighter operating the master stream who waits for orders from the fire ground commander before discharging the stream on the fire. Two, an interior sector commander who has effective command and control inside the burning building. Three, good communications between interior and exterior commanders. And four, a fire ground commander who understands the priorities of fire ground strategy, safeguarding lives, fire containment, and property protection. The dangers of master streams operations fall into two categories, danger from the impact of the hose stream and danger from the weight of the water it delivers. Don't underestimate the impact danger of master streams. Even in the old days, heavy caliber streams packed quite a wallop and were murder to control. Today's master streams throw an even higher volume of water and do it at higher pressures, a nozzle velocity of about 100 feet per second, or, as we said, more than a mile a minute. And you don't have to be in front of a master stream to get hurt. There's a law of physics that states, for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. In other words, when water is shooting out a nozzle, there's a nozzle reaction force trying to propel it in the other direction. No wonder we need mechanical, electrical, or hydraulic assists to control these hoses. A runaway hose can cut a person's legs out from under him. A portable deluge nozzle improperly secured can suddenly swing around and kill a firefighter crouched down near it. A hose coupling improperly connected can fly loose and break a firefighter's leg. A ladder pipe can break away from the rungs of a ladder and knock a firefighter off a raised area ladder. Some firefighters have been killed or injured just operating in the vicinity of a large caliber stream. A high pressure master stream can sweep a firefighter off an icy roof. It can blast slate shingles loose, showering those below with heavy, razor sharp fragments. A master stream can knock a chimney over topple a parapet wall, peel a whole masonry facade loose, dropping tons of debris on anyone underneath. It can even collapse an outer wall. But as bad as it may be, the impact of a master stream is not the main killer. The real danger lies in the sheer volume of water it delivers and the weight of that water. All buildings are designed to withstand a certain load. The joists, the beams, the columns, the bearing walls have to support the weight of the building itself and whatever contents it may hold. There's usually an ample safety margin built in. But what happens when you add water to that equation? One gallon of water weighs more than eight pounds. The average master stream spews out, oh, say, 500 gallons a minute. Eight pounds times 500 gallons equals 4,000 pounds. That's two tons of water. That's the amount the average master stream adds to the building every minute it's in use. Do that for 10 minutes, and what do you get? Two tons multiplied by 10 minutes, that's a 20-ton load of water. Now suppose you've got three master streams going for that 10 minutes. That jumps the water weight to 60 tons. And what if you leave the faucet running for 20 minutes instead of 10? you're up to 120 tons. In a big fire, you might have eight or 10 master streams in operation. Add it up. And don't forget, two tons per minute is the output of only the average master stream. Some put out as much as four tons a minute. The numbers may vary. The design and structural integrity of buildings vary. But the fact remains, if you pour enough water into a building, sooner or later, something is going to get overloaded. And when it can't hold up, it falls down. When you pump water into a building, three things happen. One, the water hits the heat and vaporizes. Well, that's no problem unless you're in the way and get scalded. Two, the water runs down the stairs and out the doors or into the basement. That's usually not a problem, because after a certain point, it runs out about as fast as you put it in. The third thing water does is soak into the building, 
and that can be a problem. Dried out wooden floors, plaster walls and ceilings, acoustical tile and insulation, all these can absorb a lot of water. The contents can be even worse. It's bad enough when you have carpeting, bedding and upholstery. But what if it's a commercial building with 20 tons of paper or drapery fabric stored inside? By the time it's done drinking up water, how much is it going to weigh? 40 tons? 60 tons? More? Enough to overload the structure? And water can accumulate. A 20 by 20 foot room, one foot deep in water, has 25,000 pounds added weight in it. Two feet deep and you have 50,000 pounds. 25 tons. I recently investigated a collapse caused by water overload from master streams. The upper four floors of a warehouse collapsed suddenly during a fire. Falling beams, boxes, and water gushed out of the second floor window onto the sidewalk. Fortunately, the fire ground commander noticed a collapse warning sign. There was no water runoff, even though two master streams were discharging into the windows of the building. Realizing the danger, he made a life-saving fire ground decision, ordered all firefighters withdrawn to safety, and avoided what could have been a deadly collapse tragedy. A few rules can help you minimize the dangers of working with master streams. Rule one, always keep in mind that the average master stream throws two tons of water every minute. Keep your eyes open for any sign of it building up inside either accumulating or being absorbed by a large amount of porous contents. If you're operating on aerial equipment, be especially watchful, since you have the best view inside and outside the building. Report any water buildup immediately that might indicate a collapse danger. Watch out, too, for roofs enclosed by parapets. They can fill up with water in a hurry, particularly if roof drains are clogged. Overloaded with water, a roof could collapse pancaking floors below or collapsing outer walls or both. Keep an eye on canopies or marquees that can hold water. They're tied into the outer wall and if they collapse they could drag the wall down with them. Rule number two, aim at the flame. When it darkens down in one window, move along promptly to the next. When there's no more fire your stream can reach, report it right away to the chief and request orders to shut down or reposition. Rule number three, don't beat on the building with a hose stream. Swing it quickly from one window to the next to avoid hammering on walls. A heavy stream can splinter shingles or crumble a masonry wall in nothing flat, especially in older buildings. The closer you are to a wall, the greater the impact and the more careful you have to be to avoid damaging it. Today's aerial streams are operated at close range to buildings. If smoke is too heavy for you to see what you're hitting, listen. A hose stream striking masonry makes a splattering sound. Hitting wood, it makes a hollow drumming sound. And when the stream finds a window, the noise drops off and sounds more like a distant rumble. With a shallow building, beware of too much penetration. If your master stream hits the back wall directly, it could knock the wall outward and drop it on firefighters on the other side. Buildings gutted for renovation are especially prone to this, although it can happen in any shallow building if partitions have been burned down. Angle the stream up onto the burning ceiling or down onto the floor to avoid a direct hit on the back wall. Rule number four, be careful when sweeping your stream across roofs. Parapets, cornices, chimneys, even dormers can crumble under heavy stream at close range. Be extra careful with slate roofs. Anytime you're using master streams, you're burdening a building with tons of water. If the collapse risk is significant, firefighters should be withdrawn and a collapse danger zone should be set up. With your best hose positions now off limits, you're left with three choices. Use independently supported tower streams move back beyond the danger zone, or move sidewards to a flanking position inside the safe corner areas around the building. Withdrawing to a safe position limits your master stream reach, but that's a lot better than having a wall of a burning building collapse on you. If it's absolutely necessary to operate a master stream inside a collapsed danger zone, a portable deluge nozzle can be set up swiftly inside the zone, then left to operate unattended. 
Firefighters sometimes forget. You don't have to be on the ground to get caught in a collapse. Walls and burning debris can...